What's up, YouTube? Erod212 here, and I went to a flea market for the first time this year. How did I do? All right, so as you saw, I got a nice little stack, a little bit over 50 books. Uh, I spent the total of $45 there, and I think I did pretty good. Uh, you definitely want to stay to the end to see uh, two really nice books that I picked up there, uh, basically a dollar a piece. Uh, but let me, let me show you what this flea market looks like.
All right, so that, that's what it looked like. You know, uh, it, it was kind of busy there. You know, uh, there were people flowing in and out. Um, as the season progresses, the flea markets get better and better, more vendors. Uh, it was a little cold. It was only in the 30s that, in the morning, so everybody was kind of a little bundled up. But it, it was fun just to get out there, get a little exercise, walk around, and look for some books, you know. So uh, first thing I picked up there was uh, Punisher meets Archie, number one. Um Doom 2099, number one. X-Men Prime at uh, Wraparound Lenticular. Love that cover. Good stuff. There you go. Some Todd McFarlane goodness. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, number 313. Amazing Spider-Man, number 285. 280. Can't pass up uh, ASMs for a, a dollar, especially in that era right there. Um, 279. 278. And 276. I believe this is the death of Ned Leeds in this one. Uh, this was sitting around, and this is a uh, this book, which was forever garbage, has picked up steam. Uh, first, Ricky Barnes, so daughter of Bucky Barnes, there had been rumored she was going to be in the in the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I don't believe that to be true. Uh, another book I picked up there: uh, Second Appearance of um, the Marvel Zombies, Fantastic Four, number twenty-three. Spider Girl, number. Zero, this reprints uh, What If 105, uh, Mayday Parker. <laughs> Good stuff. And now, uh, this haul is heavy of one title, and at a dollar piece, I couldn't pass them up. This, this title's just been getting hot. So uh, let's go with some G.I. Joes. We got G.I. Joe 104. And the, all of these Joes are near mint. Uh, pretty nice, man. I, I I would say in the 9 2 range, most of them. Uh, Without a press, G.I. Joe 101, number 95. And there are so many first appearances in G.I. Joe. I mean, we've seen what's happened to the Lady J book. But start looking at some other books. Uh, I'll point out a few as you go along, and you'd be surprised, you know. Uh, G.I. Joe number 92, and that's got the first Annihilator, first Back Blast, uh, Frag Viper, and Long Range. Um, and shout out to CBSI because they put out a detailed list of first appearances for G.I. Joe. They have one for Star Wars, but the G.I. Joe one is the one I reference. Um, I'm not going to remember all of these at the back of my head. But uh, issue number 91. Issue 89. 88. Uh, issue 77. There we go. We'll go right here. Uh, issue 75. Issue 74, first appearance of Muskrat. Issue number 70. Uh, issue number 69, uh, this first appearance of Crazy Legs. It's also first time uh, Destro reveals his new armor. Uh, issue 68 has multiple first appearances. It's uh, Avalanche, Blocker, Dodger. Knockdown, Maverick, and Worms, the team. Um, what else do we have here? Issue 67. Issue 66. Uh, 64. Uh, again, multiple first appearances. We got Backstop, Frostbite, uh, the Gyro Viper, Hardtop, and Payload. Love this cover. Great cover right here. Uh, issue 63. Snake Eyes at Scarlet. Just good cover. 
issue 62. Sixty-one issue sixty. Um, Fast draw, Ice Viper, Iceberg, uh, Monkey Ranch, and Zanzibar. So again, a lot of minor characters, but you never know what's going to happen. So if you can get them for a dollar piece, I say this all the time. Uh, worth the investment. Issue fifty-nine: The first appearance of Jinx, Raptor, and Tunnel Rat. Issue number 58 uh, is Dusty. I believe it's first. It's the new armor for Cobra Commander also, which I'm not a fan of. Issue 51 is uh, first appearance of Thrasher, Thunder, uh, Tollbooth, Xandar, and Cross Country. So, uh, Issue 50 is that, you know, milestone issue. Great cover. There you go. Real nice cover right here. Issue 49. Uh, first appearance and origin of Serpentor, uh, Slipstream, and Leatherneck. I've shown this. I've picked this up before. Uh, I like it. Issue number 37. Uh, Zomad and Tomax, Flint and Footloose. First appearance is there. Issue number 27. Uh is uh, the continuation of the origin of Snake Eyes, but uh, the big thing with this is the first appearance of Timber, which is uh, Snake Eyes' dog. So. Number 20. There we go. 19. Eighteen. Issue number 17, first appearance of Ace. So now we're going into those lower Joes. Um, no 21 there, unfortunately. I was hoping for that. No 26, which was beginning of the origin of Snake Eyes. Issue 16 is a uh, Cover Girl and Tripwire. So nice. Number 15 is a uh, first appearance of Major Blood. Take a look at this book. That's picked up a little bit. Number 14 is the first full appearance of Destro. And this book has picked up a lot. Um, $50 book at some point. So just a book to look for. Uh, 13 is the second cameo of Destro. First appearance of Torpedo. Issue 12. Issue 11, that's the first cameo with Destro. Uh, first appearance of Gung Ho, Airborne, and Snow Job. That's such a great, iconic cover. Now, if anybody knows anything about this book, let me know. Is this just, I'm trying to see, it's totally different. Uh, if you look at the corner box up top, it's, it's different. I don't know if it's a second print or what it is, um, but that's issue number 10, and that's uh, first appearance of Dr. Venom. All right, so as I said, Joe Heavy, go Joe um, for a dollar a piece or less than a dollar a piece. Um, that was, these were all bought from one vendor. Uh, you'll see it's the guy that had uh, like six or seven boxes out there. He had said he had cleaned out a lot of his inventory from his storage unit. We're just trying to move it out. Uh, there were some deals to be found there. Guys picked up some really nice books. I found this. Um, and I had never seen this before. So... Um, they call these like firesides. These these are graphic novels, basically. Uh, so I believe it's 1978. Marvel put one out. It's The Silver Surfer by Stanley and Jack Kirby. And um, you'll see it. Look it up um, on eBay. It, it's, you know, a no number one shot. But this is the reprint that was done in the 90s. And it's pretty scarce. And it's a way better cover. Um, really nice. This book has not been read. Um, it's real nice. Um, I'm trying to see without increasing any pages or anything like that, but let me give you an idea. You know, um, the back page I saw. I'm looking through this. I mean, look at that splash. That's beautiful. And you go in here, and uh, you got some great.
great artwork there. Um, but if you look this book up, it has sold for up to eighty to ninety dollars. You don't see too many of them. I believe there's only one for sale right now on eBay. But score. Then my last two books. I told you to stick around. This is why you gotta stick around. Because this is why I go to hit flea markets and hunt. Um you never know what you're going to find. Now, the first book I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you that there were multiple people there digging through the boxes. And then after they finish, like, you know, everybody takes a box and starts going through. I'll always hit the boxes that everybody else went through because don't know if they missed something. Don't know how well they know their comics. Don't know what titles they know. So I saw this guy grabbing a bunch of Green Lantern books, and I knew that he was, you know, I get, you know, a Green Lantern guy into it. Um, I saw he pulled out number 25, which is... Uh, First Law of Fleas and Atrocitus become a pricey book, become a fifty to eighty dollar book, fifty dollar book now. Uh, seen it at the cons and everything like that. So I says, ah, let me look in there. Go start looking in there. And he left this in there. And that's the one in ten variant. And if you haven't seen the sale prices for this book, uh, they're pretty impressive. Um, let me show you this here. I'm going to show you right now what this looks like here. And these are the prices for this book. And then the other book I found. Um, again, another thing I do is I'll check all tables, um, even if they have a small stack of beaters, because you don't know what you're going to find. Uh, I found that Silver Surfer in that small stack. And along with the Silver Surfer was the Spider Girl Zero. Um, this is probably like a fine plus, but it does need a good pressing. Probably could be in that VF range. Um, so what could be better getting than getting this? Finding this. So I found what if 105, um, first made a Parker. Um, and if you don't know what this is going for in the CGC 98 or 96, um, take a look right here. That's what this book is going for. So all in all, man, I, I think I did really, really well. Uh, like I said, walked around, picked up some books, and found some major, major scores. Uh, these three right here were home runs for me. But then looking at some of the G.I. Joes and what they're going for now, like I said, uh, first full appearance of Destro and books like that, um, it's a bonus. But, yeah. That was it for now. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, how do you think I did? I think I did pretty well, but I'd love to hear your comments on it. And uh, hope to do more of these uh, soon once the weather starts warming up. Uh, I like to go and hit flea markets as well as do small shows. So, yeah, until my next video.